Columbia, Columbia, this is Houston, AOS, over. Houston, Columbia, 980. These are extraordinary times, and we face an extraordinary challenge. Roger, the EVA is progressing beautifully. I believe that this nation should commit itself. They're setting up the flag now. To achieving the goal. July 1969. Before this decade is out. I guess you're about the only person around that doesn't have TV coverage of the scene. Of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Race to the Moon, a historical documentary with Huey LeBlanc. The year was 1957. The world's first satellite, Sputnik, was launched into space by the Soviet Union. Just four years later, in 1961, Yuri Gagarin, a Soviet cosmonaut, was the first human being in space. With all of this taking place during the Cold War, it was becoming clear that the United States was falling behind in technology. The dramatic achievements in space which occurred in recent weeks should have made clear to us all, as did the Sputnik in 1957, the impact of this adventure Later that year, President John F. Kennedy challenged his country to do something about it. Now, when John F. Kennedy got on the television and got in front of Congress and gave his speech, many people were absolutely shocked at what he wanted to do. He wanted to put a man on another celestial object in our universe, which has never been done before. The most outrageous part of his request was the fact that we were to land a man on the moon before the end of the decade, the 1960s. And that's what scared a lot of people. And thus, the Apollo space program was born. However, it was not without its share of obstacles. Apollo 1 was sort of a bad start for the Apollo series of missions, simply because they filled the capsule with 100% oxygen. And what does 100% oxygen do? Well, it will ignite with a spark. Um, and that's precisely what happened. All three men who were inside the capsule during a, a simple test were, were killed. Uh, it was very, very bad. Despite the tragedy of Apollo 1, they persisted, finding solutions wherever they were needed. One of the most outstanding achievements was the development of a man-made element, americium. And this element is now used today in smoke detectors. So it just goes to show you how much they had to create in order to get to where they were trying to go, in order to get to the moon. Uh, because we, we really weren't ready. We had to kind of learn as we went until we finally did have enough resources to get there and back safely and successfully. Eight years passed and 11 missions later, Apollo 11 was finally slated to send the first men to the lunar surface. Neil Armstrong, Edwin Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins were the ones chosen for the job. And on July 16, 1969, after years of intensive training, it was finally time. Large crowds begin gathering in Cape Canaveral, Florida at NASA's Kennedy Space Center awaiting the launch of a Saturn V rocket carrying our three brave explorers. Well, I was at the launch of Apollo 11 in uh, 1980, 30, 60, 69 it was. It was uh, 30 odd years. I was there with my wife Evelyn. She, beautiful young lady she was. <laughs> And I remember, everybody was ecstatic for this day, and we didn't think we were going to make it to the moon. And I remember the, the blast from the launch was so powerful, 
It blew my tube socks right off my feet. Nearly lost my toupee. And it just went higher and higher. And it got tiny. The, the spaceship, we couldn't see it any longer. And we knew that it was in space at that point. It would take them roughly four days to reach the moon. After about two days passed, they aired a special broadcast of what life was like up in the capsule of the Apollo 11. Hey, that's a great shot right there. We see you in there. It's that uh, Neil and Mike. Better be, anyway. They were floating and around, and it was fascinating how they lived in space. They slept standing up, but they were upside down. They were sideways. Actually, they were they were always they they were no ways. Actually, they weren't anyway. On July 19th, they began orbiting the moon. By the next day, on July 20th, they had finally landed the lunar module, the Eagle, with Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin aboard. Phil Collins, unfortunately, did not get to touch down on the surface of the moon. But he did get to orbit the moon, which is something I never did. By this time, it seemed as though the entire world was watching. The, I remember everybody was glued to their TVs. It was so fascinating that somebody was finally landing on the, the moon. And I remember when um, Lance Armstrong took his first step off from the spaceship, he said, one small, uh, one be known. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Columbia, Columbia, this is Houston, AOS, over. Roger, the EVA is progressing beautifully. They're setting up the flag now. I guess you're about the only person around that doesn't have TV coverage of the scene. That's all right, I don't mind a bit. They've got the flag up now, and you can see the stars and stripes on the limit. It was a proud day for America. The race to the moon had been won. Oh, push me a the American ski. Oh, those Americans. When we saw they put the man on the moon before we do, we were filthy with anger. After all, we put the Sputnik and the first man into space. We were going to launch the lunar hod, the lunar space rover, onto the moon. And we did, but nobody cared because the Americans put the man on the moon before we do. This is so frustrating, you see? Today, we are no longer in a space race with any other nation. Instead, it is now a global effort. Ironically, the former Soviet Union, Russia, is now one of our greatest allies. If you think about it, for all of our thousands of years of existence as human beings, only just recently did we learn how to fly in an airplane at the beginning of the 20th century. And in less than a hundred years, much less, we were able to put a human being on the moon. I think that's incredible. Hopefully one day we'll go back to the moon. Hopefully one day we'll go to Mars. I think that we really should explore these places because you never know what you can learn. And also because we can. What do you want me to talk about now? <laughs> <laughs> okay.